Hello everyone, it's me, Super RJ. And I have a little bit of an announcement. Remember I said about episode over episode? Well, I'm not gonna do it on the mouth of Halloween. I'll probably do it coming soon, because it's gonna be the first one I'm gonna do is two SpongeBob specials. I was just thought I was gonna do it this Halloween this year's Halloween. And the episode, two episodes were two specials known as Shanghai and then Ghoul Fools. But I'll probably do that next time. Like, next time. Anyway, I'm gonna do a three part review on this on this video. And this is a three part episode from SpongeBob. That this from came from season seven. Now if you guys don't remember my season my SpongeBob episode the car review, I said season six is my least favorite season of, of SpongeBob. And it contains has some of the worst episodes in the season, such as the car. Car. Now today I'm going to review an episode three three episodes from season seven. Now in my opinion, season seven was was a mess season. I watched Pie Guy Rules in Spon every episode of SpongeBob season seven review, and he says the scum are mostly because the good episodes are not good. I don't agree. I think season seven was mad because you know I think there are some good episodes I like, but sometimes most of those good episodes, in my opinion, they're not never really that funny to be good. Good. And there are some few less... In my opinion, I have to think there are some episodes that are a few scumbobs. But I think season 7 was meh. It was meh because, still, the comedy was meh. And most of the good episodes are just... Have the co meh comedy. But that's not what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about three episodes. And... And three and these three episodes that we has from a SpongeBob episode from season two, and that is, uh, for was well, imitation crafts. And these three of them re this is that the rice rehashed this a plot. The first one was someone in the kitchen with Sandy. The second one was Grandma's secret recipe, and the third one was Shell Box shenanigans. And they and the only two episodes I found on this trilogy was terrible. There's only one, and that's the third one. I think it's okay. Now, here's the thing. After Steven Hilbert left the show around, with, I guess, season five or whatever, the, the writers decided to make... They didn't notice when they met... Watch to make someone's kitchen with Sandy. They didn't notice a rehash of the imitation crafts. But when... But when... When Grand Secret Recipe came in, you notice that this plot is sim... This, this episode is similar to imitation crafts. It's like the writers... Have used to made a classic episode that they, they, they made years ago, but when they made a new episode, they try to make a new plot for the new episode. But then they, they thought that the idea that they already made that they didn't know they already made they came that they made years ago was there that they made. But guess what? They did it the third time, but this time they did it okay. But here's my first part of it. The first one they rehashed on Imitation Crab was someone's in the kitchen with Sandy. I'm gonna do those, those the other two episodes and. And three part, and a three part. So anyway, this is the first part. So without further ado, let's review "Summers in the Kitchen with Sandy." So the episode started with a very okay. I mean, not very okay, if you know what I mean. We see Plankton about disguising as a se sesame seed in one of the Krabby Patty buns, and he thought it'd be a plan that if SpongeBob after SpongeBob makes the Krabby Patty, he might escape. He might tip the Krabby Patty out to the front door. His plan about to be scrapped because he knows that his the Krabby Patty's about to be served too. SpongeBob's best friend, second best friend, Sandy. And then when we about to see Sandy about to eat, the 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 writers in the anime decide to be funny that we see Sandy eating her eating her food this up closely with her mouth chewing her mouth open. It's so disgusting. Heck, even kids find it don't find it funny. At least Plankton was disgusted about it. But guess what? Plankton's about to suffocate because he doesn't have because he knows that it's not Aaron. No water in Sandy's suit. While knocked out cold, and Sandy somehow did not suspect that there's a tiny plankton in her in her suit. Anyway, she walks home about to take a shower, about to take a shower, and and then she suddenly peel a shed off her fur to make sure she skinned her main body part part all over her body, which caused plankton. While showering, plankton suddenly survived survived by filling her Sandy's helmet with water. With that, he knows that Sandy's fur is right next to Sandy while she's showering. Then gets Plankton the idea. So Plankton decided to steal Sandy's fur to, to, or to extract the formula. 
He said, yeah, like I said, this plot is similar to Imitation Crabs. But we'll get to more detail why this episode fails at copying copying of uh, Imitation Crabs later. <clears throat> so anyway, Plankton walks walks back home, and of course, Karen knows that his plan is going to fail, of course. So then, and here's kind of the most infamous part I don't like in this episode. Everybody think that San- Sandy, the one... Think that Plankton, who is controlling Sandy's fur, think that is the real Sandy. I mean, it's very inconsistent. I mean, what better if they know something suspicious about her, but they didn't even try. Anyway, Sandy, Plankton ditch. I mean, it is kind of interesting that Plankton tries to talk like Sandy. That's the only thing I like in this whole episode. Episode. And heck, even SpongeBob did not notice the difference between how different Sandy, how different Sandy is. Anyway, after that, before that happened, we got to see. We then suddenly have a subplot in this episode. The subplot is when Sandy knows her furs get stolen. He's she's about to go. To she's about to walk around Bikini Bottom in in her bikini with a coffee pot on her head, and then everybody calling her a nudist. It just makes no sense whatsoever. In fact, when I first watch this, I feel kind of very sorry for Sandy. I mean, she should never walk out in public in her in a nude. In her bikini in public. It just doesn't feel right. You know, that kind of reminds me. Even though Plankton does steal her fur, but he forgot that she wears a suit. Sandy could wear that and she wouldn't be naked. That'll be. Then their problem solved. Then she won't. Then nobody won't call her out. Then no way. Then no. Every fish in her bikini bottom won't mock about her about being a, being a naked chipmunk. But no, they didn't. They just totally forgot about Sandy wearing a suit at suit that point. Anyway, then they finally cut back to playing the Spongebob. Now here comes the most boring part of the episode. Uh, all is nothing about Plank- Spongebob showing Plankton how to make a cry patty. It just gets tedious and boring. I'll get to the one- only favorite part of this whole episode there. So anyway, after Sandy disguised herself like she's a hula dancer, but of course the... The vent, the giant vent that breaks the seaweed, whatever it is, to call Sandy come naked. Everybody's mocking her for being being a hairless goat. I mean, how can I supposed to like all these care background characters? They even more jerks than they were. They even more jerks than they used to be. Like in, like in the Sponge Who Could Fly. Anyway, then we cut back to Plankton and Mr. Crab and SpongeBob. We see Mr. Crab's about to tell SpongeBob he's about to clean his safe. And tell him he's leaving the formula on the counter. Which caused Plankton to cheer on. Now here comes the most infant, frustrating, inconsistent. When Mr. Crash said that he put his formula in the counter, we see Plankton about to cheer because he's getting close to getting the formula. And then SpongeBob and Mr. Crab did not see Plankton jumping around in Sandy's eye course and mouth course. It's just so inconsistent. Yeah, that's my main problem with this episode. It's so inconsistent. So inconsistent, it makes me drive up a tree. And now for the worst part in Sandy's subplot at best. We see Sandy strolling around the park. And then for some reason, everybody became about now starting to become angry at her for being un- for being being out of public in her bikini. It just makes no sense. First they mocked her, now they mad at her? How am I supposed to like these characters? It just makes no sense. Anyway, now we're got to the final part part in the episode. Which I have to say the only thing I like in this whole episode is the part part when about to finish making their carry patty, SpongeBob keeps saying, Oh, oh try again to Plankton about ten ten times. Every time a Plankton is about to put the bottom to Patty, SpongeBob literally thinks SpongeBob Plank Sa- Sandy almost put the bun-, bun on top correctly, and it keeps going on and on. That's the only thing I find it funny. And then the climax finally kicks in. <clears throat> now, the part where Sandy suddenly ends up with the Krusty Krab in the sewers, and finally have a battle scene with Plankton. And the fight scene is very bland at best. Why can't Plankton also notice that Sandy's fur can do karate stuff? That yeah, that'll be a perfect fight scene. Set Sandy forgot that she that her even though in her fur she could still do karate in her fur, fur fur. And then Plankton knows learns about karate, 
learn about karate by using any spur in, in robotic form, and they have a cool epic fight scene. And, but no, it literally ends with Sandy, only one who gets all the who gets up all the punching up someone. And after that, San, Sandy finally catches Plankton, and the formula has been rescued. Before Plankton about sending Plankton about to send to jail, then the cops we saw from earlier decide to arrest Sandy for telling her of a public nudity is against the law. Uh, what? I mean, come on, we see the cops in early in the episode for mocking her for being naked. But then they suddenly come back to them arresting Sandy? Seriously, this plot, this episode is so frustrating. I mean, think back to Imitation Crabs. That episode, they just have some perfect comedy. In fact, when Plankton, when Plankton in his robot, robot crabs, crab suit, when he walks up to Spongebob, at least Spongebob knows that that miss that robot crab is the rumor's crab because you think it actually looks like him. You know he knows something strange about his body parts. Because that makes sense because Mr. Krabs, the rumor's crabs, he has a hard shell. And with ro when Spider-Man touches robot crabs, he knows that he think it is the real Mr. Krabs because he's have a hard shell like the real Mr. Krabs does. That has a that has a better concept. But no, they didn't work it here. This is the most inconsistent episode. Yes. Way more inconsistent than that part with Squidward in Fungus Among Us. So, how do I fix this episode? Well, not that much, except for one thing. Have a cool epic fight scene. Also, make up your mind what the character, all the back, and also don't add the subplot. Don't add that sa subplot with Sandy being, being around Bikini Bottom in the nude. It just doesn't work. Also, make sure that all the characters feel consistent on what's up with the play. Is Saint Plankton when he's Plankton controlling, controlling Sandy's fur, and that'll be much, and that and then that, that'll be kind of funny. So that's how I fix this episode. So see you next time my part two of this, of this rehash of Imitation Crab trilogy. Bye.